you now or at any point in your life like have 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 you felt like you've had like a spiritual spiritual connection or you know i when i put effort into it last year when i had time i'm i'm not a religious person and um I was at this place and they were talking about spirituality and they're like, you know, it doesn't, you know, it can be whatever, I forget what they called it, your spiritual whatever. And I use the the universe, you know? And the reason is, is I definitely didn't create it. I don't control it. <laughs> I know it exists. So, okay, the universe will be my, you know, my, my spirit uh, animal for, for lack of a better term. And it, it definitely did something. And, and it was interesting because I couldn't tell you how or why, but it, I, I think what it did was it, it subconsciously took a little bit of my need to control away. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I didn't realize how much that I, I had a, a, a problem with, with control. control. Yeah. But, it, but it's also, it's like a shift from, it's a shift from controlling to, to behaving. I don't know. I, I, I look at the times in, in, in my life that like trying to connect to something bigger. I've always been really envious of people who, who have like a pretty rich or, or, or like a, at least cogent spiritual life. Yeah. I feel like it like helps them, you know, like I, in some I, ways. I, I'm the same way. You've been in some in, in incredibly, I don't want to use the word traumatic, but like you've been in fucking super, super fucking high pressure situations. Were you talking to anybody in those moments? Was there anybody like? I'm, I'm, I'm honestly so glad you asked that question because uh, it's, Again, I, I think an interesting story. So, um, and I don't know if I've ever told it. Um, so when I got blown up, uh, I had an arterial bleed. So um, from my uh, uh, ulna artery was bleeding. Um, and uh, so, you know, it gives you about, I, I mean, it depends. And again, some doctors can be like, fuck you, you're wrong. You know, you have a couple minutes. Did you know that? Um, not at first. At first, I thought my arm was blown off because I, I, I could feel it gone. I know that sounds weird, but it felt not there. Um, and because it, it blew my nods off, so I couldn't see. Everything was dark in the house. There was a gunfight going on. I couldn't hear anything. You know. Um, but when I eventually got outside of the house, there was a, a like a fucking porch light on. And that was the first time I looked at it. And it was fucking hamburger meat. Um, and then it was, it was, it was what it was hang, hamburger meat. I mean, it was just, it was broken in so many places that it, it wasn't just like twisted. It was like, it was, I don't know how they saved it, but it was mangled. It, it, it literally looked fake. Um, it, but I noticed that I was bleeding uh, pretty profusely. Um, and then there was a, a wall, like, you know, and I just looked at it and I'm like, well, that ain't fucking happening. You know, like, I'm not getting over that. Um, and I think I maybe at that point lost consciousness for a minute or two. I remember just plopping against the wall. But anyways, I, um, well, at first I remember thinking, okay, my arm is definitely gone. It's fucking gone. Like, fucking goodbye. Have a good one. Um, I'm going to be an armless vet. And I just, I just remember this like whole process in my head of thinking, God, I'm you know, one armed and just like flashes of Vietnam veterans, you know, were in my head. And, and then I'm like, all right. And I kind of accepted that. And then, then I remember going, Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You might die. And I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. You know, like I, and this within, you know, a couple seconds, sure. I was like, Holy shit, you might die from this. Like, you got to fix this. And I'm like, yeah, you don't want to die from this. That'd be fucking stupid. And then when um, uh, one guy got to me, uh, which, and this is just fucking cosmic stardust, the guy that comes and puts the tourniquet on my arm is the guy who I was with on that mission in Afghanistan when I was a ranger. What are the odds of that? So... I'm there, and I'm and I'm laying there, and I'm I'm. Wait, which 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 guy from from from? So remember when I said I worked with the unit I wanted to go to, and they were selecting their own targets and doing stuff in Afghanistan. Yeah. When I was a ranger. Yeah. That guy, cut to I'm in his unit now. Wow. And he's the one who put the tourniquet on my arm. Wow. The guy you're like I want to do that. Yeah. What are the odds? You know, years later. Um, and so I. Uh, 
but I'm, I'm there and I'm, and I, and it just kind of occurs to me that I, you know, fuck, I, I might die. And, and people were working on, on me, but you know, you, you don't know. It's hard to gauge, you know, uh, you know, it's bad, but like, again, you don't. And, and, and are the guys that, I mean, you were shot at. Oh, there's a gunfight going on in the house. Right. Still. So, I mean, yeah. has that been dealt with yet or? Uh, I, no, I think it was still going they on. They were still the, fighting. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of guys. Um, but, um, so anyways, uh, I'm laying there and I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I, I might die. And then it just kind of hits me. I'm like, shit, I, I might actually die. Oh my God. Like, this is when religion comes. And, and I'm like, I'm in this, you know, pain. I'm in this fucked up situation. And I'm like kind of excited. Like, again, human exper uh, experiment. I'm like, all right, like. Come on, religion. Like, you where know, are you, God? where are you at? Where are you yeah. at? Yeah. And I'm like laying there and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, you know, how do I feel? And I just started like kind of going through the process and, and I'm like, nope, still, still nothing. Like I, and I legitimately thought I could die. And I just was like, I just, I don't have it. It just wasn't, it wasn't there. And, and it's because I wasn't open to it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fool. It was, it was. I was expecting something to like hit me over the head. Sure. And, you know, and again, it's the people that are open to that concept and all those things, it comes to them. The people that it's just like, I go to a, I don't believe in ghosts and I go to a freaking ghost house and I sleep there and mm, oh, shockingly, I slept through the night and had no fucking problems. Right. Weird. Right. right? right, right. You know, oh, they must've not come up that night. No, right. it's that I don't fucking care, <laughs> you know? And, um, and so it's one of those things where it kind of disappointed me to be huh. perfectly honest. It, it kind of, and again, it was my lack of, you know, but I, I was, I was hoping that I was going to have some kind of like sense of some kind of next step. And I just didn't, I just felt like I was just going to die right there in the fucking mud and a sh fucking shithole in solder city shanty town. Like I, I just, I didn't have a good feeling about it. I, I had like, how fucking stupid would it be if I fucking died right here in the, in the mud laying down? It just like kind of disgusted me. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? It, did, it didn't feel honorable to, you, you know what I mean? It didn't wow. feel like I thought it should feel. It's like going out on the battlefield, you know, like Lieutenant Dan, you know, like yeah. it just felt like if you experience anything like that now, do you feel like it would be different? I don't know if that's an answerable question. But. I, you know, I would hope. I, I would hope. Um, I definitely have a different spiritual belief. Um, now, I the simple way to explain my spirituality is I don't know what it is, but there's something bigger than me. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's a fact that I don't fucking know. Yeah. But it's proof that there's got to be because I didn't fucking create myself. So right. that's kind of where I'm at. So I would hope it would be different. And, and um, but yeah, I've always been jealous of people that are on that spiritual wavelength right. to where it's just a real connection. But right now you have so much to say. Like right now you have so much to do. Like you have so much work. Like you have so much shit that you want to yeah. do and accomplish. And it yeah. just seems like, you know, when I... I don't know, man. It, it just seems to me so much of like your psychology back then was like fucking tur tur turning shit off. Yeah, it was right? about shutting everything off. And now it's about trying to open up. And, and you know, the other thing, I mean, I was just a sad kid. You know, I was, I was a kid where they would, uh, you know, go like, hey, we're going to go toilet paper Mr. John, old Mr. Johnson's house. And, you know, I was like fucking seven, eight, nine. And I'd be like, Why? I don't want to do that. He'll have to pick it up. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking? You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. that would be sad watching old man John. And it just like, uh, and they were like, what the fucking, fucking moron. You know, you know, it just discomfort is growth. And I wanted that discomfort. Is that bucket, is that a bucket that you feel like is filled with? Like, have you filled that bucket? Or do, is that, is that, does that go it's, forward? It's a struggle, you yeah. know, it's a struggle. I hear you, bro. It's a struggle. That's a daily struggle. Yep. And, and because again, I, I can see where, you know, there, there's a lot to um, self-care and all these different things, but there hasn't been a time that I haven't done something extremely self-destructive that I didn't learn something from mm -hmm. and, and, and that I didn't really gain from the experience. And, and you know, you're kind of 
it's like balancing is like, is it worth it? You know, and um, and I just have this fundamental need sometimes. And, and again, going back to what I said way earlier, which is about acceptance of self. Like I have finally had to accept that at a certain level, I crave self-destruction. I just do. And I accept it. Um, and I had to accept it because if I pretended it wasn't there, it would, it, it would happen, you know, without me really being, you know, I would just go into that mode. So right. I just like, look, man, again, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super interested in that. And I think that's also not being, not sound like a fucking douchebag, but it's kind of like the artist's journey too. It's like, I, I, I believe something, you know, we talked about him earlier. It's something shy and I kind of argue about all the time, like this, this need to like bleed out. I don't know if that's the same, but can you give me an example of like the last time or something recently you felt like you did done that was self-destructive? Um, usually my self-destructive behavior was with, was with women, quite frankly. Uh, I mean, I partied in Vegas with strippers for like two years straight. It was fucking literally all I did, you know? Um, and, and that's a crazy lifestyle. And, and it was a destructive lifestyle. And, it, and again, it was how much can I destroy myself and still bring myself back? What level of destruction can I go to mm -hmm. and still come back from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I haven't found it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know what it is. It's fucking death, obviously. <laughs> um, but how close could I get to that? It's a perverted sense of of, of self challenge. Challenge, yeah, and yeah. This, this, that cycle. But is there a way you can channel that into work? And and that's what I've been doing. And that's what I've been doing. I've I've been much better. Like the last, I, I finally realized that that about a year ago that that self destruction and, and that I was attracted to that destruction. Like that girl's fucking crazy. Well, let me give her a call. Let me totally. take her out. You Love know, it. like, hey, those friends, you shouldn't hang out with totally. them. Fucking come on, guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that was just what I was. 100%. Uh, the way it was. And, um, and, and, and you know, a, a, like a good example would be, a, a, not that I know specifics at all, but commonly mentioned about you know, Heath Ledger and, and his process for the Joker and all, all these things. It's, it's very, it's a, to me, it's a similar mentality of, of self-destruction. And, and the problem is society or people that don't have that, it doesn't make sense. So right. when you're, you know, that way uh, in your normal life and, and you see self-destructive behavior, people are like, you know, in the military. And the reason I bring it up in the military is, is because it's being, you know, they're, they're just wrecking dudes for getting DUIs, getting, you know, dude, what the fuck were you doing speeding 120 miles an hour? Well, because they were trying to get some adrenaline. Yeah. Once you've been at this level of adrenaline and you yeah. go home, like, once you've been shot at in close proximity, yeah. well, well, you know, how are you going to replicate that? Hop, you know, buy a new motorcycle and go 130 miles an hour, you know? Right. It's like, okay, uh, man, man, maybe I'll get the cops to chase me. Fuck it, I don't care. Because I'm trying to feel, I'm, you're chasing the dragon of destruction no different than chasing the dragon on a drug. Yeah. Because despite what most people say, adrenaline is an addictive fucking, fucking drug. Absolutely. And once you've got it, you're always looking for it again.